So the motion that we are doing tonight, and the motion is the sort of statement, and then these guys will agree with it, and these guys will disagree with it. The motion is, this House believes that Commissioner Gordon should not have used the bat signal. So in the Batman movies, Commissioner Gordon, when there's a criminal that he can't handle, and he feels that his police forces are out of, uh, are out of depth, he will put up the bat signal in the hope that Batman will then come and save him. The problem is, once he puts it up, he can no longer control what Batman does. So this is a debate about vigilantism. For those of you who don't know, vigilantes are people who, in society, take justice into their own hands. So they feel that they've seen something wrong happen, and they decide that the judge, jury, police force, politicians aren't doing enough about it, and they're going to deal with it. So these teams are now going to discuss Batman as a vigilante and whether or not he's a hero or actually he's a disaster waiting to happen. Uh, so I'm now going to hand over to Izzy, who is our chairperson, and she's going to conduct proceedings for tonight. Uh, thank you, Kitty, and I would like to invite Ben up to the lectern to, do, to start the opening speech of tonight's debate. Who is Batman behind all the pomp and popularity that he receives? The answer? An arrogant brawler who thinks that he can do whatever he wants without any repercussions. In my debate, I'd like to make three points. Firstly, that vigilanteism as a principle is damaging to society. Second, that Gordon's lack of control of Batman will only cause chaos. Thirdly, that Batman should not be Gotham's judge, jury, and executioner. Before we begin this debate, I'd like to explain to you what the critical question of the entire debate is. Do the short-term benefits of Batman to Gotham outweigh the long-term drawbacks of Batman and vigilanteism on society and the people as a whole? My first point, why should we as a society choose the police over vigilante justice? We have the police only employ a specific group of people with reasonable sanity, training, and beliefs. Because we realize how responsible they would have to be in wielding the power to take someone's life, take someone's future, and take someone's dreams. We realize that we have to be careful about who we gave the res responsibility to, and I'm pretty sure that someone who dresses as a bat at night is not who we chose. I'd like to give an example. Please. Winston Churchill stated that good and great are seldom the same person. So the good could be the police, but Batman is definitely the great. I agree that good and great are two separate people. But I don't think that just because good is someone who wears a normal uniform, great does not necessarily mean someone who wears a uniform with pointy ears, a cape, and a fake six pack. <laughs> I'd like to give an example of when vigilante justice has gone wrong in the past and a possible side effect down the line of opening the barriers to vigilante justice through Batman. I'd like to talk about American witch hunts, which involved random vigilante mobs deciding that someone was a witch on foolish premises and burning them at the stake. Vigilantes on went catastrophically wrong, and it is not something that we ever want to repeat. Secondly, if Batman makes the wrong call, then there is no way of taking back what he did or controlling the results. And unfortunately, it is quite easy to make the wrong call. Commissioner Gordon has decided that it is, it is acceptable for a man who he has only seen, ever seen, fighting and wearing a cape and a helmet with pointy black ears to be able to kill due to a split-second decision? For the, people, uh, for the majority of people, these will be glaring warning signs already that someone is not in the right state of mind, but clearly not for the Commissioner. For my third point, Batman can punish people, Batman can punish people however he sees without any input from the law or a jury. This means that no matter what the jury says, Batman can dole out punishments as ridiculous and extreme as he likes. The commissioner literally gives him the all clear to kill a man for swearing. And as we already know, Batman does not look like the sort of guy who would make the most logical of decisions. Once again, I'm talking about how he pretends to have lost his voice, the fact that he wears a cape, and that he thinks it's reasonable to wear a helmet with pointy ears on top. In conclusion, I'd like to ask you two separate questions. Firstly, are the short-term benefits at all worth the long-term consequences? Of course not. And secondly, 
Would you be okay with a random person who dresses up as a bat at night and speaks as if he is eating gravel at the same time? Be your judge, jury, and executioner. I urge you to present. So the poverty will grow. 
That means more crime and instead of building a new safer city, we will build a city with, uh, which is even worse and with more crime. <coughs> How are you saying that Batman is ruthlessly killing innocent people when he has a rule that he um, doesn't want, he does, that he doesn't harm or kill innocent people? Furthermore, um, he even avoided killing the Joker, who he had many opportunities to kill. I know, but police will set them to uh, fr will go through law firstly without killing him. But Batman sometimes <coughs> kills somebody without even looking in the law, and if and many times they are innocent. My second point is about people's reactions to vigil vigilance. If vigilantes will continue in their actions, people will be more likely to copy them. Let's take an example where we have two worlds. In the first world, Gotham is destroyed by the Batman's enemies, and the whole world is trying to help the city to recover. In the second world, Batman keeps fighting against the, uh, his enemies in Gotham. If people will copy actions from the first world, they will be prepared for every action they will be able to take care of themselves in bad situations. But if they will be copying Batman's reactions from second world, they will cause degradation of the society. Who will want to live in such a society? No, thank you. Commissioner Gordon set the bad signal for giving Batman know that whatever he does is good with law. Whatever Batman does, police is responsible for it. And if he kills some innocent people, it's police's fault. As my partner already said, they don't have control over him. As Batman tries to fight crime, he is committing another crime. So if vigilantes <coughs> will be spread in the whole world, how would police control them if they have a problem to control one person running in one city? Because if they spread in the whole world, there will be many people and it will be very hard, it will be impossible to have it under the control. <coughs> and also, vigilantes are people who distracted the law, so they punish without any rules. They punish innocent people mostly with death, as Batman also does. Do we really want to li live in such a society, in such a world, we, when we don't have police being us, but only some people who don't have police training, and they should help us in a bad situation? Thank you. Uh, thank you, Linda, very much for that speech. I would now like to invite uh, Kareem up to the electric previous speech. I would first like to start by saying some rebuttal. Ben. Batman does not kill men for swearing. He is summoned when the commissioner is unable to solve the case. Batman is given consent to bring justice to Gotham by doing what he will to very dangerous people. Linda said Batman has killed innocent people. I would just like to say, Batman knows exactly who he kills. Batman has never killed an innocent man. Batman is Gotham's greatest asset. He's prevented anarchy amongst society. He's a hero. And he's risked his life to make sure Gotham will not go down in flames. I'm going to tell you three important points why Batman is in need. But first I want to tell you something to keep in mind. Proposing will not only make the crime more prevalent through, throughout the city, but does something much more powerful. The word I'm going to use is disrespect. It disrespects the people of Gotham and the victims of violence. Gotham is desperate. And the fact that police have the option to make justice by calling Batman and solve the problem will spark outrage if not done. I have three points I'm going to talk to you about. My first is as, sim as, as simple as it sounds. Batman prevents crime. The second is Batman makes people feel safe. And the third is that Batman helps there to be a balance between where police forces are applied. So my first point, Batman prevents crime, yes. We realize that when you say Batman prevents crime, everything he's doing is literally... Who he is. And that makes it twice as terrifying for a criminal. Batman does something stronger than bring justice to a crime already done. 
he can make sure the same thing won't happen again as long as he's watching over Gotham. Lastly, Batman is stronger than the police. It should not be comp more complex than that. My second point is, Batman makes people feel safe. He makes people feel more comfortable. As if he sits on Gotham's, a Gotham Tower and watches over the city, fending off any evil. Does the police always succeed? No. <coughs> people still feel safe with their presence. How safe do you think people will feel after knowing Batman is always ready to risk his life for them? So, what does this do for the city? It encourages people to have an op optimistic attitude. Yes? Um. Wouldn't you think that people would feel uh, more safe having an account um, <coughs> that they feel accountable instead of an anonymous person who isn't at all accountable for whatever, whatever <coughs> is actually? Of course they would. But Commissioner Gordon only calls Batman when he is unable to do what he's supposed to do. And of course, if there's police able to go up and solve the crime, go ahead, they can do that. That is their job. But Batman is only called when they're unable to do that. Without Batman, Gotham will be a much more dangerous place. My third and biggest point is that Batman can help balance police's attention with major and minor crimes. In a place like Gotham where there are several ter terrible crimes that occur too often, people can't handle both major and minor felonies. Without Batman, police can't focus on the everyday crimes that actually affect people's lives. Batman would focus on the bigger crimes, and the police can make sure they uh, should smaller ones don't go unnoticed. Crime has become worrying to the public and the police department, and it has been the priority to make sure criminals don't go on punishment. No longer calling Batman would mean that there would be a gap in Gotham City Police Department is incapable of filling. I urge you to oppose. Thank you. people. But what do you have to say when he uses his fancy schmancy cars and motorcycles and causes all these car crashes and bridge crashes and explosions and all those innocent bystanders are killed, injured, or lost and just in the rubble? What is that? Now sure he doesn't intentionally mean to kill them, but he does kill them. So saying he doesn't set out to kill people is not a valid argument. Now, on to the next. Now, Saying that the policemen are not capable of what Batman is, is a different issue. And if we think that they're not capable, then we should be discussing ways to make them more capable than ways to just keep shutting them down. And Batman prevents crime? I don't think so. That leads me on, that leads me to my beginning argument, how Batman, is, or vigilantism, is not a dependable solution to our current problems, but will actually, in the long run, worsen our system and current issues. No, thank you. Batman is not a solution, but because we cannot trust him. Others, we know that he's also Bruce Wayne, but Gotham does not know that he's Bruce Wayne. Gotham just knows him as Batman, a man behind a mask, so there's no way of contacting him without shining a light in the sky. Now, that's not going to work all the time. There's been multiple events where he literally just didn't show up. Then what are you left with? Yes? When people look at the sign in the sky, what do they see? They see hope that someone is fighting for them and their community. No, they see that things have gone so wrong that the police have decided to put it all down and give it up to some guy in a black suit. <laughs> now, you can't contact him, you don't know his real name, any records or anything behind him, and vigilantes like Batman will put their own personal problems before any real problems. He, his full, Bruce Wayne's intention to become Batman was out of revenge to avenge his parents. No, thank you. He did not do it to help Gotham. He did it because someone shot his parents and he thought he would serve his own form of justice, not the justice that Gotham agreed on as, as citizens. Now, 
What happens when he messes up? What are you gonna do? You can't bring him into court. You can't contact him. There's no way for him to pay for his crimes and his mess ups, and he has messed up before. So he's gonna leave the police with this big mess to clean up and no one to account it for. And like you said, he's a blank face, easy to blame, but then the police just look really bad and so does the government for having this huge mess to clean up once he's done. Yes. Um, I think you said before that the police, but the police are capable of not all of it. What do you suggest we do instead of using Batman if the police clearly cannot um, fight the crime in the city? We should think of ways to improve the police system and ways to keep shutting them down, which leads me on to my final and last point. By releasing the bat signal, you have stripped any power and authority from the police and from Gordon himself. You showing that he's literally given up all hope, and all fate rests in Batman's hands now. He's demonstrating to the public and to criminals a weakened police force, and no one will take them seriously, and no one will try to fix the problem that we have, the obvious problem that this Gotham City Police needs some help. Now, so what happens when Batman's busy, or what happens when he has a date, or what happens maybe if he dies? You're left with a weak, illegitimate police force who can't protect you or really do anything because you decided to put all of your efforts into Batman. By releasing the bat signal, you have thrown in the towel and admitted defeat. You've lost all control you originally had, and now you're just left with a weakened police force and a guy running around in a bat suit. So I urge you to propose. Thank you. Thank you, Cameron, very much for that speech. I would now like to ask uh, Sarah to come up and give a speech. why using the bat signal was a good idea. My first point has to do with how Gotham's justice system is ineffective and corrupt. My second point is about uh, bat how Batman is a true and tested protector of the people of Gotham. But I would like to start with some rebuttal. So the whole team of proposition has ignored the issue here. Gotham City's corrupted state and police officials who are not protecting the people. The first speaker's whole argument uh, was also about uh, his outfit and cape. Well, uh, we don't really judge people on looks. Also, that Cammy said that this signal shows that uh, the police have given up. Well, yes, Gotham is in a horrible condition, and they need him. Why are you all ignoring this? I would like to start with my first point. Um, Gotham's justice system is in ineffective and corrupt. The problem here is that the government in Gotham is filled with power-hungry officials and politicians. This is really what Gotham is known for. So what happens here is that the corrupt police um, hide information of the big criminals and those from the good police, like Gordon, uh, Commissioner Gordon here, which uh, Gotham doesn't really have many of, and only let them solve a smaller crime. This is a horrible situation because Gotham is dealing with villains like the Joker and Bane, and this means that the police force, the protectors of Gotham, are the biggest criminals. This is not a good situation. This is where we need an outside force. So, because what do the citizens do when their protectors are the criminals and their city is falling with their safety at risk? We believe they should be safe even when their police won't protect them and they shouldn't be deprived of it. So, um, a perfect example of this situation is the original police commissioner, who was Commissioner Love. He was a power hungry criminal and he actually hired Commissioner Gordon in hopes that he'd be evil as well. But Gordon proved to be a good guy and saw how much Gotham actually needed his help. He saw how corrupt the police were and how badly they needed someone to step in. This is why Gotham needed Batman and the Batman signal in the first place. On to my second point. Batman is a true and tested protector of the citizens of Gotham City. First off, he's a hero. He loves justice, that's his whole thing. He's an ally to Commissioner Gordon, and Gordon trusts him as Gordon is the head of police. Batman is clever and has many advantages which weren't uh, mentioned by any uh, opening government, and most importantly, he is Bruce Wayne. He is wealthy, charming, and famous, and he can find out a lot of information that the police can never get their hands on because of this fame. Also, when he's with his mask and he's undercover, he represents safety and power to the people. What the bat signal does is aids to this safety as it gives citizens a wake-up call to how horrible the crime is in Gotham City and how the politicians there are lying to them. We believe that the citizens deserve the truth, but more importantly, the bat signal is a symbol of hope. It lets people know that they have someone helping them. And this someone helping them isn't just anyone. This person is Batman. The people, uh, Batman has the people and citizens in his best interest. 
and he does so effectively with unbiased judgment. A great example of his unbiased judgment is when the Joker created a scheme in order to have full control of Gotham. And basically, Commissioner Gordon was forced to choose between a group of people. Uh, this group, one group was um, prisoners, and the other group was regular civilians. So, um, the average person would choose to kill the prisoners because they're prisoners. But Batman didn't see this. He actually saw the individual lives that they had. And he ended up being able to save all of them. Um, Commissioner Gordon and the police force couldn't have done this without him, even with the SWAT team behind him. Um, so, to conclude, there is a reason that Commissioner Gordon used the bat signal in the first place. This reason is that Gotham City, in its terrible and corrupt condition, needed help. Gotham City needed an outside force that was good and unbiased like Batman. Thank you, and for these reasons I urge you to vote. Thank you, Sarah, for that speech. I would like to ask Proposition, and I will be explaining why Proposition have won this debate. I have two questions to talk to you about today. One, can we accept Vinodiantism as a proper form of justice? And two, is Batman really the solution to our problems? Um, I'd like to begin by saying, as my partner Cameron has already said multiple times, that by allowing Batman to be who he is, by giving Batman the power to be who he is, we are completely undermining the power of the police force. As soon as that signal is in the sky, the police have literally said they cannot do it. And what does that mean in the future? Maybe there's a small riot and Batman isn't needed, so the police need to take care of this. Nobody's going to take them seriously. Smaller, petty criminals doing petty, petty crimes will think the police can't handle it. Every time there's a crime, they call Batman. So why can't I go and just do what I want because the police can't stop me? When there's a flummox of these criminals doing what they want, there is nobody there to stop them. No, thank you. Um, I'd like to also rebut some of the things said by opposition. Earlier on, it was said that Batman doesn't follow our justice system. Isn't that only a, um, helping a proposition? Batman doesn't follow our justice system at all. Victims... Vic okay, the whole point of our justice system is we find the villain. We take them in and we decide, as a group of people, whether they have done something wrong. If the answer is yes, they will go to jail. If the answer is yes, it is really bad, they will possibly be killed. But we have decided, no thank you, as a group, that we will do this. Batman, however, just decides as his own person, I think this person has done wrong, I will kill him now. Is that really what we work for? The whole justice system that we've built up, is this what we're building up to? I understand that Gotham, no thank you, I understand that Gotham is in a very bad time, but in the long term, we cannot always rely on Batman. One day Batman will die. One day Batman will think that his girlfriend's life is more important than the lives of others. So by saying that all of Gotham and all of the bad things that happen, all of the villains that come, if we are relying on Batman to get rid of them, what is going to happen when Batman simply isn't there? No thank you. Um, <laughs> I'd like to make some more points. One that has been brought up many times is that Batman doesn't kill people. Batman is good. Batman is hope. However, the, op the, the opposition have been mentioning things that I think they're taking from the movie. However, in the last comic of the Batman comic series, which is what it originally was, Batman shares a joke with the Joker, reaches out, and breaks his neck. If that's not brutal murder, then I don't know what is. Batman purposely, with intent, killed the Joker. Up has been found. Um, so, as Cameron said many times, Batman's existence only undermines the existence of the police. It undermines the importance of our justice system. And really, I think that by having Batman as a figure there, we were only inspiring many, many more other vigilantes to just come up and serve what they believe justice to be. What we'll end up with are loads of small, baby, grown, homegrown superheroes. All think that they can do what is right. They can be like Batman. This will only end in chaos, where the police cannot control the people, and Batman cannot overcome all of the other people who want to be just like him. 
In conclusion, I asked two questions at the beginning of my speech. Is Batman's solution to our problems? Can we accept vigilantism as a proper form of justice? The answer to both of those is clearly no. Um, and that is why Commissioner Gordon should never have used the bat signal to begin with. I urge you to propose. believes that Commissioner James Jim Gordon should have used the bat single. Today, I will summarise the debate and explain why the opposition are the clear winners. To begin with, I would like to quote Oscar Wilde on the topic of vigilantism. Oscar Wilde once said, Man is least himself when he talks in his own person. Give him a mask and he will tell you the truth. The bat signal should be raised. Today's debate falls into three main categories. Number one, is Batman principally justified? Number two, are Batman's actions effective? And number three, the bat signal. So to begin with, is Batman principally justified? Now the proposition has stated a number of points on this issue. First of all, that Batman does what he wants. Batman is not about killing, he is about fear. Now Ben hampered on about judge, jury and execution. The judge will stay the same in Gotham, the jury will stay the same in Gotham, Batman is the executioner of the law. The, the, the next thing they stated was that vigilantes, as Batman, would be uncontrollable. Batman is only used because the police cannot control the situation. Essentially, they're calling reinforcements in the same way that they might call a SWAT team. They've just exhausted all their options and this is what they've got left. And besides, the proposition has failed to respond to the simple point that the justice system in Gotham is corrupt. No thank you, no thank you. <laughs> On this point, the opposition has said, we need Batman to help. Batman helps there to be balance when police forces are applied. Batman can take the blame so that people trust the government. And that he has respect for the system. On the other hand, my partner has said, Batman is a true tested protector of the law. I would like to further this excellent point. The police and government actions are not always for the better. Often these authorities are involved in silly or petty issues. Vigilante actions, and hence those under the bat signal, represent the fulfillment of wishes of the community. Batman protects the law at all costs. Now the second major topic in this debate is whether or not Batman's actions are at the end of the day. So, the proposition on the issue of is Batman effective has talked about Batman's enemies. Without Batman, his enemies will still be there. We can't get rid of them. The next point was about training. No one can be trained to think in the moment. Batman and other vigilantes know they can. Finally, my partner on this issue has stated that the justice system is slow. Batman is swift and effective. Finally, the bat signal. The proposition on this issue has stated that people fear dire situations. Batman is the most effective way to cope with this because people know that he can take the matters into his own hands and do what is right for the community. And then they mentioned this niche episode at the end of the comic books. Maybe that was just the grand finale of the comic books. I think we're looking at the wider picture here. So, specifically on this issue, my opposition partner has stated that people are afraid of going to the police and that the bat sig signal is a symbol of hope. This debate is about signaling for help, saying, help me, Obi-Wan, when you need it. The bat signal stands for fear to the criminals and hope for the citizens. Innocent people feel hope. They know that there is someone for them to go to without feeling unnerved. The bat symbol is this hope. People are now, police are now serving under both the badge and the sign. They are okay. Clearly, my partner has cemented this debate in favour of the opposition. In the words of Batman, people need dramatic examples to shake them out of apathy, and I can't do that as Bruce Wayne. As a man, I can be destroyed, but as a symbol, I can be everlasting. Thank you.
mostly, opposition won the popular vote. Can we have a round of applause? Help from Chloe, Filippo, Baron, and Victoria, who were very, very helpful, and we uh, thank them very much for that. In terms of judging, we are looking at style and um, sort of the fluidity of people's speeches, but importantly, we're looking at the way speakers engaged with each other and focusing quite clearly on the content of what they were saying. So, where were their arguments the most important? Interestingly, this year we had a split on the judging panel. So normally, we would only announce a single winner instead of a runner-up, but this year, we're also going to announce a runner-up because there was a 4-2 split of the panel. You're not allowed to ask who the splits were, by the way, that's against the rules. Um, so, we would like to congratulate the runner-up team, which is the team in closing government, for coming second, Cameron and Olivia. very, very close, is because a lot of uh, judging on the panel felt that the context of Gotham City and the corruption in the police force and the corruption in the military meant that although it's important that in normal circumstances we would hold someone like Batman to account, in a circumstance where everything's already chaotic and the police force has been infiltrated, if Batman really is your last hope, then and he's working for the police, then you would want him on your side. So we would like to congratulate Sarah and Alessio. here this evening. You've all conducted yourself, for the most part, extremely well in this debate chamber. <laughs> uh, I'd like to congratulate those teams that took part this evening. I thought you did an excellent job. It is one of the best debates that I've seen at ISOS and also one of the closest results I can remember ever happening in this chamber uh, with the ISOS students, I would say. Um, over the last three weeks, you've all worked very, very hard in your respective academic classes. Debate possibly being one of the most strenuous, as you're on your feet a lot, you're thinking a lot, you have to think on your feet a lot, and you have to conduct answers in quite possibly, or most of the time, not your first language, which makes tonight even more impressive for those of you that are speaking and debating and arguing in your second language, which is extremely impressive. <coughs> okay, we have to make our way back down to Queen's College. You're going back to Queen's College, and we're going to invite Russell up to tell you how you're going to be dismissed. I would just like to remind you okay, how proud we are of how smart you look. Please remember that you are walking through the city of Cambridge and you are representing Agos at all times. Okay? I'd like to invite Russell up and he'll tell you how you're going to be dismissed and what's going to happen. I think before we leave, there's two people who forgot about. Um, a couple of weeks ago, these people could hardly speak. Now we've got world-class debaters. We've got chairs, people have organised the clapping. We've got judges. <laughs> and it's down to two people, the wonderful Kitty and Rudy. Woo!